Welcome to Perfect Reload Weekly, where we take a look back at the week in video game news. My name is Steve, and I am joined, as always, by Christian Slater. Christian, it is a big, big week on the channel this week. Uh, how you feeling? How you doing? What's uh, what's happening with you? Considering how many times I've taken your driver's license from your wallet, I almost forgot what? it's your birthday this week. Well, yeah. I didn't want to show up empty-handed, so I got you something special. We've been together for almost a year now. What better gift than selling your personal information on the internet? Also, you're getting swatted later today. Part of my gift is the possible murder, and part of my gift is the heads up. You're welcome. Thanks. If you really want to get me something, just go go back to your planet. Or go back to whatever satanic cave you, you crawled out of. But that was not why I brought up that it is a big week this week. So before we get into... Uh, what I've been playing in the news and all that stuff. Let's get some channel stuff out of the way. I know I usually save that towards the end, but not everybody watches towards the end, all the way until the end. So let's get that out of the way uh, right now. So uh, obviously today you were watching this podcast, uh, listening to it, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I, I don't know what your situation is. Um, tomorrow is the Grand Theft Auto. Uh, we won't say six because they haven't said six, but it's the Grand Theft Auto trailer uh, reveal at 9 a.m. my time, 9 a.m. Eastern. Uh, I was trying to figure out if I wanted to like just record it and then put it up like the same day, but I always hate when I have to do that because YouTube, you know, it takes a while to like process the HD and the video looks like crap and sometimes it doesn't load right. Uh, so I think we're just going to live stream it instead and then we'll hang out for a little bit afterwards and, you know, go over some thoughts and impressions and predictions or, you know, whatever's kind of floating through uh, the old noggin here. So we're going to do that. So that'll be 9 a.m. Uh, tomorrow on Tuesday. Wednesday is the big day. Uh, the new animated Perfect Reload video. The year is 1999. It will be out uh, 9 a.m. I have it set to a premiere. So it'll start start right up at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. Um, definitely check it out if you don't mind. I would I would certainly appreciate it. Um, I think it's a fun one, uh, and uh, you know, so we'll have that to uh, to enjoy this week. Then on Thursday is the Game Awards. And I think I'm just going to uh, to stream it. So I think we'll do a live uh, reaction uh, Thursday night with the Game Awards because they said that they're going to have some uh, some announcements and all that stuff. And, you know, I played a large majority of the games that came out this year that are nominated. The really only the ones that I didn't were uh, like Zelda and, uh, you know, I didn't get a, a lot of time spent with Baldur's Gate, but, you know, enough to, you know, I, I understand what the game is and I understand why so many people enjoy it. Um, so I think we're going to do that on Thursday. And then also on uh, Thursday afternoon, there will be a new short going up that is kind of themed tied in with the game awards. Cause I figure, you know, synergy, right? That's what we, that's what we want to have. Um, so yeah, lots, lots going on this week. Uh, despite it being a week without any like real releases or, or anything like that. Um, and my dog has come to, uh, to join us to talk about all this, but yeah, so I definitely, um, you know, would say, uh, you know, stay tuned to the channel this week, uh, for some, uh, some cool stuff going on. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, I guess we'll get into, uh, what I have been playing. And so we are, uh, a week away from me filming, uh, with friend Davis for the end of the year stuff. So I've got to kind of get, get in gear a little bit with, uh, some stuff that I need to, uh, to play more of. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish anything, but I kind of figured, you know, the goal was this week I was going to, uh, try and put a, a decent amount of time into Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty, and this coming week put in, uh, the same amount of time into, uh, Alan Wake, uh, 2 to try and, uh, to get caught up on those. Those were the ones that I was really kind of focused on getting, getting done. I really think because I, you know, Baldur's Gate is kind of the one that's getting left, left on the table. You know, I, I, I didn't get enough time with it. I think it's 10 hours, 12 hours, something like that. And it's just not going to happen this year. It's too, too massive of a game. It's going to be one that I just kind of start picking away at once I get stuff done for the, uh, for the end of the year. Um, so let's talk about Phantom Liberty now that I have gotten to spend a little bit more time with it. I actually didn't realize how much I have played of it and I kind of realized like how big of an expansion it is. I mean, it is quite hefty. I was, out of curiosity, I was looked, uh, I looked at a uh, mission list 
to see how many missions you have. And it was way more than I anticipated. And then I also got to a point where, uh, you can't do the next story mission. You have to go, they force you to go and do side missions, which adds even more time to it. So it is, uh, not only just because of all the bugs they fixed and the new graphic overhaul and new perk system, you know, and, and all that. And they redid the cops and, and all that stuff. Not even just that, but just like the expansion itself, the content that is exclusive to the expansion is just a lot. I mean, it, in a way, it kind of feels like almost like another full game. You know, when you see stuff like um, uh, when games would do, uh, I, I guess uh, just because it's been on my mind, like The Witcher, uh, like The Witcher 3 had those couple of expansions that were like really sizable and they were like, what, 20 or 30 bucks when they came out or something like that. Like, I mean, it feels like this big kind of thing. I mean, back in the day, you know, PC game expansions would be a whole new retail release, you know, and this is kind of like what that, what that feels like, especially because, you know, we are, I think this week is three years since the game came out. It was the beginning of December in 2020. Um, so they, you know, they certainly had some time and obviously they had to spend a lot of that time fixing the game and trying to earn some goodwill back, which I, I think they have done. I think this is, I think Phantom Liberty starts off pretty, pretty good. I, you know, we, we streamed the, the beginning of it when it came out. Uh, I think it starts pretty good and then it kind of, it slows down a little bit, but once you kind of like get rolling with it and get a few missions under your belt, um, you kind of get back in the groove of things because, you know, for probably a lot of people, they haven't necessarily been playing this game for three years straight. You know, it's not, it's not like a procedurally generated game. It's not a live service game or something like that. There's really no reason to kind of keep going back to it unless you just want to keep re-experiencing the, the story all over again. So, you know, I hadn't played the game really since it came out. I spent a little bit of time with the PC version earlier this year because I had a goal of let's play the nicer looking PC version uh, to get ready for the expansion. But I just I only got a couple hours in and had to abandon ship. So I'm playing this on on the Series X. And so it took a little bit of time to get used to the shooting and get used to just the way the game plays and the way the game feels. And, you know, there was a moment uh, earlier this week where I was just like, man, I just don't really want to be playing this. I'm kind of I feel like I'm just forcing myself to play this. But I was like, you know what? I, I spent the money on it. I want to get it done. It's a big release for this year. Let's just keep going. And I played another couple of missions and it started to kind of like click into place again. And I was like, all right, you know, now I'm starting to remember why I like this game so much because uh, I really loved the the game uh when it came out obviously it has a lot of shortcomings it had a lot of problems technical and otherwise i still think the script is really weak the dialogue writing is really weak um i think some of the i, I think it, one of the biggest things it had was there was just a lack of really memorable story missions from the game you know if i really sit down and think about okay what were the big missions in that game like the big set pieces and all that I can kind of piece together maybe five or six out of the dozens and dozens and dozens of missions that you complete during the during the story, not to mention all the side stuff that you can do. Uh, so I think that it, it had a little bit of a problem with just like there wasn't enough like impact in it. Whereas you look like a, at a game like um, let, let you will use Grand Theft Auto five as an example, where kind of like the back half of that game, like every mission for the most part, there's obviously some smaller ones, but like every mission starts to become like this big grand set piece as the story is starting to wind down. And uh, you really kind of remember a lot of what's happening in the middle portion of that game. You start getting into the heists. There's the mission where Trevor's on the dirt bike racing to get to the crash plane. Uh, when Michael wakes up in the hospital, like all this kind of like mid game stuff that really sticks out and, and, and stays with you. And I just don't think cyberpunk had a lot of that, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not a bad game or anything. I, or not a great game because I think it is a great game. And I think that all the improvements they have made have made it just that much better. Uh, and I am enjoying the expansion so far. Uh, I, like I said, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to get it. I'm certainly not going to get it fished by finished by the time we get to the end of the year stuff in a week. And, uh, you know, I, but maybe by the end of the year, you know, something like that. It's what December 3rd when I'm filming right now, you know, try and get it done by the end of the year. But, uh, it's difficult because man, that I'm not going to get into super long details about, it, but man, that, that damn call of duty has just got me. It's just, it's so good. I know people have been complaining and complaining, but oh, man, it's so good. It's just, it's just, it's great. It's, it's hard to put it down. Uh, but I would say, you know, if you're, if you're still, even though the, the expansion has been out for a little bit, if you're still on the fence about cyberpunk, even just, are you on the fence of returning to that world and playing this expansion? Or are you on the fence for playing this game for the first time? 
now's the time to do it. Actually, wait a couple of days because they're doing a big another big update this week where they're adding like a whole metro transport system and a whole bunch of other bug fixes and all this stuff. Um, so we're getting even more stuff that's coming out this this coming week. So I would say by the end of this week, if you haven't if you haven't picked up Cyberpunk, go out and pick up Cyberpunk because it is. Um, it's very good. I actually think, uh, what is it? It's tomorrow, I think, that they are releasing that complete edition that's going to have the base game and the DLC put together. I think it's either 60 or 70 bucks. Uh, so I would say, you know, that you might as well just pick that up because, you know, um, all the Dogtown stuff for... Uh, for the expansion just blends seamlessly in. When you start a game, uh, you can choose to just skip the game. They'll give you like a pre-made character and go right to the expansion, or you can just start from the beginning. Or if you had a completed save like I did, uh, you just get the mission kind of just triggers when you start up your game and you can go and choose to, to interact with it to begin, to begin it because it is in this cordoned off portion of the world. You can't leave. Um, you know, it doesn't lock you in. Like once you begin the expansion, it's not like you're locked into Dogtown. You can't get back out to, uh, to, is it, it's not Pacific, Pacific is part of it. It's no night city, night city. Is it, you can't, it's not like you can't return. You, you can, you can get out of there. Um, it just, obviously none of the missions will be in the old part of the old map. It'll be all in the new map. So I'm digging it. Um, you know, it's going to be a little sad to put it down to focus on Alan Wake this week, but I really need to, uh, to spend more time with Alan Wake. I had much more time already put in to Phantom Liberty than I have into Alan Wake 2. I think I'm only three or four hours into Alan Wake 2. Um, so I really need to uh, to kind of to pick up the pace with that. So that's kind of what I'm going to be grinding away uh, this week, um, which I am uh, I am looking forward to. Watching that guy get his brain melted while connected to a computer made me realize that's the most likely way you're going to go out. How did that feel to watch? Was it arousing? Uh, no. Uh, also, my brain is not connected to this computer. I'm just sitting next to it. You're an idiot. Um, <laughs> there was one uh, new release this week. We had a video go up over the weekend, and that was Steam World Build, uh, the next uh, game in the Steam World franchise. Uh, they've definitely played around with their genre quite a bit. You know, Steam World Dig and Steam World Dig 2, kind of those action platformers. I think they've done a tower defense game. They did a deck building card battle game, I think, as well. And this is now a city builder, uh, but it's a city builder with a little bit of a twist. So it's a very, uh, and I say none of this in a derogatory way. It is a very simple city builder. It is a very uh, bare bones city builder, but that is a good thing because this is, um, I said this in the, uh, in the video, this is an excellent entry point for people that want to get into city builders or people that just really enjoy city builders like me, but want something that's not so, um, demanding on your time and, uh, stressful because city builders can get super stressful when you're kind of knee deep in them. Uh, so you have your, your top level city that you are putting together. You're adding residential buildings, warehouses, logging industry, uh, things that generate water. Uh, you need to repair broken buildings and all this stuff. And then down below, you have a whole mining system and you need to mine to find tools, to find gold nuggets. Uh, you need to build, uh, dig, dig around the mine to, uh, have places for your miners to sleep and everything is kind of like symbiotic. Like you need more engineers to do the minor stuff. So you need to build more residential stuff up top to then upgrade those residential units into engineer units that then can flood into the mine. And so, it, you know, it, it all gets tied together, but it's really well laid out. Um, I, I didn't really have any issues with the game whatsoever while playing it. The one thing we didn't get to in the video uh, was the combat stuff. Eventually there are like monsters or creatures or what have you uh, that uh, in, kind of uh, invade your mine and you have to take care of them. It's a little bit of a tower defense aspect. Uh, so we didn't get to that point yet. I imagine is I'm going to keep playing this game, so... I imagine I'll, I'll probably encounter that pretty, pretty quickly. Um, I like the look of the game. Uh, very quiet game. Uh, there's, you know, that video that I put up is really, it just kind of sounds like I had the game audio turned off, but you really just kind of have the, the noises of, you know, dropping down units and the, the kind of background construction noises. There's no real like soundtrack or score or anything like that going on to the game. If there is, then I must have accidentally turned off the audio somehow, which I don't think I did because I don't, I don't think I ever went into the audio options when I was, when I was getting the game ready to film. Uh, so, I mean, I would say that this is probably a pretty excellent choice to just put on mute and, uh, and listen to a podcast and just kind of chill out, um, chill out that way and, uh, and kind of enjoy your, uh, your time with it. Um, 
I didn't get a chance to play the console version because uh, with City Builders, with st stuff like this, you know, I prefer a mouse and keyboard. Uh, but I have heard from the reviews uh, that I read and seen some discussion online that the console versions are pretty good. They actually put in some some solid effort to get this game uh, working pretty well with a controller. And that's always a big concern anytime you have a traditional or a genre that traditionally was a PC focused genre because mouse and keyboard just made it a lot easier to maneuver around. Um, I've had very little success or, uh, I don't know, success isn't the real word, very, very little uh, satisfaction, I guess, with trying to play traditional mouse and keyboard games with a controller. I have yet to find one that really worked. I know, like, uh, when the Halo Wars games were coming out, you know, they were built from the ground up to be controlled by a controller, uh, and I just... I remember like, I don't know, being 20 minutes into playing this game. I was like, I just want a mouse and keyboard. This sucks. Like, I don't, I don't like this at all. You know? Um, so, you know, it is what it is. If you only have a console, it sounds like they have, um, done enough to, um, satisfy your, uh, controller, uh, needs when it, when it comes to this game. Uh, I can't, from what, from what it seems, it doesn't sound like it's a super long game. You know, you kind of have these different maps to build on. Um, I don't know if there's like scenarios in there or anything like that. There's different difficulty options. Uh, we just played on the normal one, but it does look like there was a sandbox mode in there. And I always really enjoyed the sandbox stuff in city builders. Um, you know, I'm fine with scenarios and, and, and the like, but for the most part, I really just kind of enjoy getting in there and screwing around and, and just building the city the way I see fit. And, uh, so it seems like you could, you could probably do that. So that may end up being what I end up, uh, spending my most, most of my time with, uh, with the game. Then there's about five, five maps to, uh, to pick from. I believe no matter what you pick, they are all desert, uh, areas. Um, we picked the, the dinosaur bone one. And in the picture you saw kind of like a jungle, uh, motif, but once you get in there, it's just, it's just the desert. Um, I think that's just, you know, that's just a steam world thing. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe they update the game at some point and put in a little bit of variety. Maybe they don't, you know, who knows? Uh, but I, I would say I, I definitely recommend, especially with it being on game pass, it's kind of hard to, to, uh, pardon the pun, but hard to pass this up, uh, when it's on game pass, because it is a, a really nice kind of distraction at the end of the year, especially if you're already done with like all the major releases and you're kind of not in clean up or catch up mode, uh, having, having this to, uh, to, to play around with is a, is a pretty nice change of pace. So I definitely, uh, definitely recommend it. What I wouldn't give to be the dictator like overlord of a small mining community. Everyone would be paid in Slater dollars, and a pair of American blue jeans would cost more than a car. Wonderful. You know what? If you want to be a dictator, you can go be a dictator uh, in somebody else's house and uh, just do that. Live out your uh, despot uh, dreams. Uh, go for it. Uh, so I, I did play a couple of other things, a little bit uh, older games. One is several years older, but uh, we're going to touch upon real quick Dune Spice Wars. Uh, so Dune Spice Wars came out on uh, on console Game Pass. I don't know if it's on PC Game Pass. I can't find it in there. Maybe I'm just not maybe it's just not coming up for me, but it's it doesn't appear to be in there. Uh, and, uh, speaking of a game like, uh, SteamWorld build, build with the controller, mouse and keyboard stuff, uh, I don't think they spent any time with Dune Spice Wars trying to get this game to run correctly with a controller on Xbox. I don't even think they spent a lot of time have, making this game look like it even belongs on a console. Uh, when you go to the options menu, it looks like the PC options. It has like graphical settings and all this stuff. And it's just like, wait, what? Like none of this looks right. The game runs super slow on an Xbox. Uh, the text is tiny. I mean, I think they really thought that you were just going to be right directly in front of a computer monitor. You could read all that. There's no sizing options whatsoever. Uh, it got to the point where I was maybe 20, 30 minutes in and I had to stop playing the game because I physically could not read what was on the screen. I would have been having to stand up in the middle of my living room to, uh, to try and read what was going on. So I just kind of gave up on the game. Uh, I have heard, I've heard mixed things about it, but I wanted to try it out. I like, uh, I like the occasional RTS, you know, I prefer turn-based, but you know, every once in a while I'm like, eh, I'll play, play a little RTS. I played a little bit of Age of Empires earlier this year when they put that on Game Pass and, uh, I figured, you know, I like the new Dune movie, you know, enough that, you know, why not check this out? And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to find a way to play this on PC because I would like to, to mess around with it a little bit because I have heard, you know, there are a lot of negatives I, I have seen online, but I've also heard quite a bit of positives and, you know, I'm a person that's 
willing to kind of put up with some negatives if the if the game is good enough. Um, who knows with, with this one? I can tell you right now, I highly suggest not playing it on uh, on the Xbox on Game Pass because uh, I don't know unless you have your Xbox hooked up to a PC monitor at your desk. Uh, good luck trying to read anything unless you're like three feet away from your television or you have. Uh, I don't know, a projector or something like that that you're playing games on. So I I tried to play Dune Spice Wars. I didn't necessarily get uh, get a chance to play play a lot of it. Um, last thing I'm going to talk about is a game that's been out for quite some time that I've always wanted to try and get into. I bought it. I don't know if I bought it when it came out. Maybe within the first year of it coming out, first two years of it coming out, I, I picked it up. And that is The Witcher 3. Uh, I don't really like a lot of fantasy. I specifically don't really like high fantasy, which that seems to be what this is, at least to me as somebody that's not super well versed in that stuff. You know, there's monsters and whatnot going on. There seems to be some magic uh, abilities that are happening in the world. And uh, I saw that it was on sale for pretty cheap on the, uh, the one of the Black Friday sales. I picked it up on the PlayStation and I was like, all right, let me let me give this a shot. So I spent a couple hours with it and I realized very quickly that uh, I did not remember anything about the beginning of The Witcher 3. Uh, I was playing through this and I was like, did Am I playing an expansion by accident? Like, did I accidentally load that? And I was like, no, I didn't buy the version that came with everything. I just bought the base game. Is this really how this game begins? Like, I don't remember any. I, do, I don't remember a single thing of you having to go and fight this. Uh, was it a griffin you're fighting at the beginning? I can't remember. But you're trying to find Siri and you're having these flashbacks and you're interrogating people in a bar and going out to, to try and find berries or something to try and lure the creature in. I remember absolutely none of this. So it's basically like I'm playing the game again for the first time. Um... The problems I had with the game originally was the thing I do really remember is I hated the way the game controlled. I didn't like the way, uh, was it Geralt? Geralt? Is that his name? The Witcher? The Witcher? Geralt? Geralt. Geralt. That's it. Um... I didn't like the way he controlled. I didn't like the, uh, it always felt like the, the stick wasn't necessarily like, sensitive enough and I didn't see a sensitivity slider. So I'm just kind of getting used to it, but he just feels, um, I don't know. He just feels off. There's something off about the way he moves. Um, and the way the, the combat kind of works, I just, I couldn't get into it back then. And I still have that problem now, but I'm kind of forcing myself to, uh, to get through it. I don't know how much I'm going to end up playing of it right now, at least, because I'm, I'm still knee deep in Call of Duty. I want to play more Steam World. Still, you know, crank, you know, like I said, crank through Alan Wake this week. And, you know, I was playing a bunch of Phantom Liberty, which I still want to play through to completion. But it was just one of those things where I was like, oh, it's, it's only a few dollars. I've always wanted to try and get into it. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those big game franchises that I have really no interaction with. And it just kind of seemed like, let's, let's try it out. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll see, I'll keep you updated if I end up, you know, getting really into it or anything like that. It'd be awesome to kind of get lost in it because I've, I've kind of been missing ever since I finished Spider-Man a few weeks ago. And I kind of want another like, uh, you know, big story driven kind of big game, you know, just kind of like a big, you know, thing, but that, something that's not like a first person shooter, like Phantom Liberty and something that's not like survival horror, like Alan Wake. Like I just want like a, you know, it's got some, you know, it's got RPG elements, you know, it's kind of a big action game. Like I, I kind of just want one of those again. And there's not another one like that really coming out in the next few months. Um, so I figured, you know, we'll give it a, give it a shot. You know, I, I, I'm a firm believer in just because you didn't like a game once doesn't necessarily mean you won't like it. If you pick it up a few years down the line, you know, taste change, you know, you get into different kind of games. You know, I never would have played a game like cyberpunk or Starfield, you know, a few years ago because I just hated first person RPGs like that. You know, I played Skyrim because it was, you know, it was a pretty compelling game, but I didn't play it to completion. And it, it really wasn't until I played the outer worlds, which I know a lot of people knock that game but i mean that was the game that was like oh i can i can enjoy this style of game i can kind of get into this um and so you know with the witcher 3 hey maybe you know maybe something will turn or maybe it won't maybe i'll ultimately end up it just won't be for me but i'd like to uh, at least give it another shot but that is going to wrap it up for what i have been playing and we'll be back in just a moment with the news So it was kind of another week with not a lot going on. And actually, the majority of the stuff uh, that happened this week was kind of video game adjacent in a way. And we're going to kick things off 
with the kind of the first details of the Fallout TV show that's coming out on Amazon Prime in April. Uh, so there's an article that came out uh, via uh, Variety, I believe it was that kind of showed some photos of the characters and uh, give you some idea of what's going on. So it is announced that it is canon. It is part of the overall uh, Fallout world as, you know, is an official uh, thing. And the, uh, the co-developer and executive producer, Jonathan Nolan, revealed the basic premise of the series. This is from Zach Wisen's article over at Kotaku. Uh, it is not focusing on the storyline from any of the Fallout games. It's its own thing. It says the Fallout show will mainly revolve around three characters, naive vault dweller named Lucy, young brotherhood of steel soldier Maximus and Walton Goggins, who is playing the mysterious and cool bounty hunter known only as the ghoul. After Lucy leaves on or leaves her vault on a mission, she runs into the other characters who are on missions of their own. Uh, so this was eventually just kind of like a text article with some photos, but then the trailer came out. The The first trailer came out, so I took a while, I took a look at that. That is out now, you know, pretty much everywhere over the weekend. Uh, my biggest problem with it is, is that it just looks like a bunch of people in Fallout cosplay walking around, you know, a, a wasteland. It looks, it just, it, this is my biggest problem when they adapt video game stuff. The, the clothes that people wear in video games, the fashion that people have in video games, the things that work in video games don't necessarily work in other mediums. That's going to be the biggest problem I have with that Zelda movie that's being live action is those people are just going to look like they're wearing high quality Zelda cosplay. Uh, that being said, though, despite the fact that it looked like a few of those characters that were wearing the uh, the vault jumpsuits, you know, the blue, the classic blue and yellow jumpsuits. Um, aside from that, the show does look very good. It looks like it has fairly high production values. It looks pretty solid. Um, I thought the power armor stuff looked really nice. You know, it didn't look uh, low quality or anything like that. Uh, the trailer had quite a bit of humor in it. I liked the line where it was like from the people that brought you something and then it was like, and also two day free shipping. And it all had a little asterisk next to the free shipping. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, you know, I think that this show has a shot. You know, out of the big uh, video game TV shows that have happened, I, can, I think the only two that have really come to mind are... Last of Us, which is like critically acclaimed and like beloved at this point, and people are feverishly waiting. It sounds like we're not getting season two until 2025. Uh, and then the Halo show. I never watched the Halo show, uh, but I heard nothing but horrible things about the Halo show that it was just not good. Uh, I watched a couple of the trailers and I was like, yeah, I don't have any connection to the Halo franchise, really. Uh, no nostalgia for me or anything like that. I'm not a big fan of the series. Uh, so I'm just gonna, gonna pass on this one. But even though I'm not a Fallout fan, I don't particularly care for those games all that much. Uh, I'm going to check this out. Uh, it actually is like pretty, pretty looking okay. Oh, the other video game show, Twisted Metal, came out this year. A lot of people really liked it. I gave up on it after a few episodes. I couldn't get it. It just looked too low budget for me. It looked like a lifetime version of, uh, of Twisted Metal. It just looked, it just everything looked off. It's like the DC movies. I'm not a big Marvel fan, but I will say that the Marvel movies look way better than the DC movies for whatever reason. It's not because they have necessarily better actors. It's just their CGI looks better. Their lighting looks better. Their composition, their shots, like everything just looks better. Um, and, uh, you know, so sometimes it's just tough to watch a show where it's just like, this just looks bad. And I also thought the dialogue was pretty weak in, uh, in Twisted Metal. I thought the writing was, was pretty rough. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm eagerly or not eagerly. Uh, I am, I am optimistic about this fallout show. I think it's going to be, uh, the pot, the possibility of being, uh, being pretty cool, especially if it has that humor kind of carrying it through because, you know, they are kind of, uh, you know, post-apocalyptic is kind of a serious thing, but fallout always had that kind of like sarcastic take on it and uh, almost like a satire of like the atomic age stuff in the fifties where people were building fallout shelters and stuff like that. So I think that they, if they can blend that right, I think it'll be nice because you know, comparing it to the last of us, which of course everybody's going to compare it to the last of us. This show is incredibly dark. It's incredibly dour. Uh, it has moments of humor in it uh, as people can find humor in dark things. It's how we cope a lot of the times. Uh, but for the most part, that show is pretty, pretty rough to watch. You know, it's pretty, pretty sad. It's pretty heartbreaking at times. Um, so I think that this could, uh, if this is as high quality as it looks across every episode and the writing is strong, then I think that this would be like an example of like, Hey, we don't necessarily have to take like the most serious, you know, movie traditional drama adjacent video games 
and turn them into successful properties outside of video games. We can do something that's a little bit more traditionally gamerish, you know, uh, that has some humor tied to it that isn't necessarily like a tight, you know, narrative thing because Fallout, you know, they're open world games. You can kind of play that game at your own pace. You can kind of do things out of order, align with different factions. Like your experience may not be the same as everybody else's, but with the game like The Last of Us, where there is no break away from the main kind of freeway of the story, you know, everybody's experience is pretty much the same you know it's it's a little bit tougher to adapt that so i think it's probably a smarter thing for them to come up with their own original idea for this show and not necessarily tie it to a particular game or a particular quest line or or whatever it may be so i think that that's that's the right the right thing to do in this case i auditioned for this i figured a fallout show could use a possessed television amongst its ranks they tossed me out for showing up in character naked and covered in soy sauce yeah, that wasn't in character. That was you drunk the other night. So, yeah, congratulations. Uh, so the game that uh, apparently just will never go away, despite the fact that I don't think that anything is ever actually going to happen with the sequels, Beyond Good and Evil. Beyond Good and Evil, when that game came out, you know, people liked it. Uh, but it's not like you would think with the anticipation for Beyond Good and Evil 2, which who knows if that's still even ever coming out. And, and, you know, the, the way that people scour leaks of information and things that people said that they can read into in an interview or whatever it may be, you would think that the original Good and Evil or Beyond Good and Evil was like one of the greatest video games of all time. And it wasn't. It was a B game. It was fine. But, you know, it, it's a cult classic game. It's not this big mainstream thing. But uh, it got leaked that a 20th anniversary edition is coming out. Uh, after Ubisoft accidentally released it early, they sent the game out to a bunch of people. Um, they had to, they obviously had to take it back, but then they had to, um, to announce that it is uh, coming out. They accidentally released it to people that subscribe to the Ubisoft Plus platform. Um, and it was an in, incomplete, not final version of the game. So they, they were kind of forced to, to reveal their hand early and, and talk about this. Uh, I think honestly, what they're probably doing is they're, they're putting this out and they're going to use it as a gauge of should we keep doing any development on Beyond Good and Evil 2 if they still are? I'm not convinced that they still are. I think that they have probably quietly canceled that game. And it's just going to be one of those things where they just never actually announce that they are canceling the game. It's just one of those things where it's just it's never going to come out and they'll get asked about it. And they'll deflect the questions and, and stuff like that. Um, but I think that this is a good chance for people to finally figure out, like, what is all the fuss about? Like, why do people talk about this game so much? Uh, so I think that that's that's probably a good a good way for this to uh, to happen. Um, so it looks like it's going to be coming to PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X and S and Nintendo Switch. So it'll pretty much be out on everything. I imagine it's going to be knowing Ubisoft. Well, they did what? They did Mirage at what? Mar Mirage was 50 bucks or 40 bucks. I would say that this is probably going to be that. You know, I think if it wasn't Ubisoft, this would probably be like a $30 thing. Uh, but if it's going to be at retail, like if they're going to press it onto a disc, it's probably going to be, f yeah, 40 or 50 bucks, I imagine. That might be a tough sell for some people. You know, this might be one of those things where initial sales aren't great until like reviews come out and say like, hey, you know, it's bug free or it plays really well. And it's, you know, they do all these new tricks or new quality of life stuff. And then people would be a little bit more comfortable spending the, the money on it, especially because so much of the fan base is um, or not necessarily the fan base, but so many the, the the potential buyers of this game are people that may have never played it before, you know. Uh, they just they just have that curiosity. Uh, I want to say I rented it. I know I never I never owned it. I played it, so I, I would have rented the the PS2, uh, rented it on the PS2. I it's not memorable in my mind. I I don't remember much about it. Uh, I remember like the the photography aspect of it in the pig guy, and that's uh, that's kind of about it. Um, it's not it's not a game that really stuck with me over the years or or anything like that. But I would certainly be interested in checking it out. You know, I I think I've talked about this before that you know that era, that early two thousands PS two original Xbox and GameCube era, that is probably my biggest blind spot in all of gaming. Uh, I just wasn't playing a lot on consoles at that point. I either was just not really playing games at all outside of like sports games and some wrestling games and, you know, a couple of things here and there that were maybe a little bit on the bigger side of things, but I didn't play any of the Metal Gears. I didn't play Jack and Daxter. I didn't play 
uh, Sly. I didn't play Eco and and all that stuff. Like I just I really missed out on like a lot of the biggest games of that time. I had a GameCube. I never had Mario Sunshine or Luigi's Mansion until I was much older um, when I was you know collecting as an adult. Um, it's just it's just a big blank area there. So I you know anytime they do like a remaster of these things, uh, it piques my interest because I would like to go back and try and relive. Uh, or not relive, but experience kind of like why were these games so big and try and try and frame it with without a modern eye. Try and think of it as, you know, w- what this game was like and the potential impact that this game had when it when it originally came out. So, I you know, I am curious, you know, they got my attention. I, I wouldn't be uh, uh, certainly adverse to, uh, to checking it out. All right, next up, we finally know what Dan Hauser is doing, and now we also know what some of the other people that left uh, Rockstar along with him are doing. So we talked about last week that Michael Unsworth, I think it was last week, that Michael Unsworth has left um, Rock, you know, he left Rockstar Games. Uh, he was lead writer on Red Dead 2, wrote a bunch of other stuff. Laszlo has been gone for a little while. Co- co-writer along with Unsworth and uh, Hauser on Grand Theft Auto uh, 5 and 4, I believe. Um, and Laszlo has been contributing since since three, I think, maybe even earlier. They were really the kind of the, the main creative core uh, at Rockstar, and they are they are now gone. Uh, and they are all now together again at Dan Hauser's Absurd Ventures. Uh, so this article uh, again from Zach Weizen over at Kotaku. Uh, it says in early 2020, Dan Hauser left Rockstar Games following the release of Red Dead 2. In 2023, he announced his new studio, Absurd Ventures, with the aim to not just do video games, but also doing TV, film, and comics. And then Rockstar veterans Laszlo Jones and Michael Unsworth uh, have now joined as well after also departing. Uh, so they have announced their first two projects. They are not video games. The first one is American Caper. It says it is focused on two normal, badly damaged American families caught in a world of corrupt business crime and inept politicians. The first project is going to be a graphic novel illustrated by comic book artist Simon Bisley. The other thing that they are announcing is A Better Paradise. It is an existential suspense thriller set in the near future, and it is an audio fiction series. So, uh, you know, a, a, a fiction podcast, essentially. It's going to be 12, 12 episodes, and they are both planned to come out uh, next year. Here's a quote. It says, We are excited to introduce these two new universes. Uh, and their characters and lore said uh, this is from Dan Hauser. They represent our approach to storytelling and media. These initial releases will allow us to introduce these universes at the same time as we are working on other iterations and expansions. This is just the beginning. I think this is probably not a bad way to launch things. Certainly a lot less money to put into a, a, a podcast and a graphic novel than building out a triple A level video game or even a film or a television show. You know, I think this is a good litmus test. They put these properties out there. They have a lot of cachet, at least in the video game industry, uh, for people that are, you know, big fans of the Red Dead series and the Grand Theft Auto series. And if these work out as a graphic novel and in a podcast, then, hey, hey, we are going to make a game or we're going to turn this one into a television show and this one's going to be turned into a movie or whatever it may be. I think this is a really smart way of kind of of testing the waters for this stuff. Um you know, I don't think I'm going to probably run out and grab a graphic novel these days unless it gets like rave reviews. But hey, a, a podcast, you know, a narrative podcast. I've listened to a couple in my time. I listened to the first season of uh, Lime Town and I listened to a little bit of the Magnus archives at one point. Uh, but, you know, I listen to so many podcasts these these days. Well, actually, I only listen to a couple, but are so long that it, I don't really have the room to to take on other stuff. And some of the podcasts I were listening to, uh, or I was listening to, like, um, oh, God, what was the name of it? It, it ended uh, last year or the year before. Um, well, Reply All. I, li- I, was, I, I really liked Reply All, and that ended. And kind of the, the you know, something similar to that was um, uh, Under Understood, and uh, that doesn't seem to be happening anymore. They, it's been months and months and months since a, since an update with them. I know they sometimes take very long breaks, but I haven't heard anything about anything coming from from those people, um, which is uh, which is a shame. I miss that style of stuff. The if you've never listened to it. Probably the greatest podcast episode in history is an episode of Reply All called "The Case of a Missing Hit." It's uh, about this guy who had this song stuck in his head, and nobody else had ever heard of the song, and people were convinced that he was just making it up. Uh, and it goes down this just massive rabbit hole. Um, it is it is absolutely enthralling. I have listened to that episode like a dozen times now since it since it has come out. Uh, it's very very good. 
Uh, so I would, I would certainly be uh, interested in checking, uh, checking this out. Um, you know, I like uh, what Dan Hauser did. I like what Laszlo and Michael Ellsworth did. I, I, I like the writing quite a bit in Red Dead 2. Um, I always thought Red Dead 1 was a little bit more campy, not necessarily my style. I think GTA 5 is a little bit dated at this point, but I think it was still a really strong story. I really enjoyed the writing in GTA 4. Um, so they are, they are people that I am, I am certainly interested in whatever it is they are getting up to in, you know, in the future. All right, our final story this week, because it is a slow week, you know, with these holidays, there's going to be shorter uh, shorter episodes for the most part. We already talked about this, but it's uh, it's the Grand Theft Auto uh, trailer. Now, everybody keeps saying Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer, but that's not what Rockstar said. Rockstar just is calling it the next entry in the Grand Theft Auto series. So I'm really curious what that actually means. Personally, what do I think it means? I still think it's Grand Theft Auto 6. I don't think it's going to be an offshoot. Um... It also, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if it, if they decide not to call it Grand Theft Auto 6. But I don't see why they wouldn't call it Grand Theft Auto 6 at this point. You know, I think they kind of got, you know, with with the stuff that was the Grand Theft Auto 3 kind of era, um, you know, that kind of made sense for 3 to be its own thing and then Vice City and San Andreas because they were all using, like, the same engine. They were all... Um, kind of like not using the same assets really for the most part, but I mean, they were like, you know, they were kind of like one after another. There weren't these large gaps in between. And those games at that time were certainly not, you know, they had the skeleton of what was going to come with Grand Theft Auto 4 and Grand Theft Auto 5, but they weren't these overwhelmingly massive games. Like at the time, they were very big open world games, but they weren't, you know, just crammed with all the crap that you can do in the, in especially in, in GTA 5. Um, but I don't know, maybe they maybe they decide that they want to go back to that and have these offshoot stories. But it seems at this point it's been so long since Grand Theft Auto V came out to say like, oh yeah, this is this is not necessarily our next main Grand Theft Auto. Because like from a marketing perspective, it's like, well, it's a new Grand Theft Auto, but it's not a numbered one. So it doesn't feel as big. Like, I don't think that they're going to to do that. I think that this is just gonna be straight up Grand Theft Auto 6. But Hey, this, uh, well, for me in two days, I'll know, but for, for you all, uh, tomorrow we will, we will know and we will, we will watch together. Um, I am, I am very excited. There was a really good post on, um, I think it was Forbes that talked about the initial trailer for Grand Theft Auto V. And I went back and watched it, uh, as you know, after reading that article and you only meet Michael, the out of the three characters in it, you do see Franklin in it. I believe you also might see Trevor at one point, uh, but it, it really does focus on Michael. It, you know, it's it's uh, Ned. I, I can't remember his name. Ned, the the actor. You know, he's narrating the trailer. But you get a good idea of what that game has to offer. It doesn't go into super detail. I think this is going to be the same thing. I think it's going to be like, you know, this narration. You're going to meet the two characters because it seems like it is going to be the two characters. Uh, I said it's kind of like a Bonnie and Clyde style story. Uh, I think you're going to see both of those two characters. And I think it's just going to be a bunch of, not CGI, but it's just going to be like in-game engine, fly over Vice City, see some of the landscape and, and all that stuff, see some of the city, some of the activity. I think it's probably going to end up being very similar to the Grand Theft Auto V trailer. Um, I, I can't imagine they're going to deviate too much. They like to not necessarily drip feed stuff, but they, they market their games in their own way. I remember they did a lot of that stuff that was like the travel stuff, like come to Los Santos and see uh, the golf courses that we have or the tennis courts that we have, or you can go up into San Andreas further and do mountain biking and outdoor activities. Like, I, I think you're probably going to see a lot of that similar kind of stuff. I would like to see them change up and get away from that travel style thing and do their own thing for this. Um, but I am, I am very excited. I mean, it is my most anticipated game. It's my favorite franchise of all time. I love the Grand Theft Auto franchise and, and this game is going to be massive. It is going to be absolutely gigantic when it comes out. Um, and there's gonna be a lot of people paying attention to watching that, that trailer, uh, tomorrow. So it's, uh, I am excited. I am very, very excited to uh, to watch it, and uh, I, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see what they have to offer. And you know, we'll, like I said, we'll we'll stream it and uh, you know go into some thoughts and and all that good stuff after the fact. You know, after it's done, you know, it's only going to be a couple minutes or whatever. So it's not like you know it's going to be this crazy thing. But uh, I am. 
yeah, I am I'm ready to go, man. I am I am ready to go for a new Grand Theft Auto. It's been it's been too long. I have played through all of five like six or seven times at this point. I need uh I need a new adventure. Although I will say I'm a little I am a little sad because after five, it was the first time uh, playing a Grand Theft Auto game since the original and through all the ones that, that came out. It is the first time where I was like, I wish we were getting a direct sequel to this. I want more of these characters. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed uh, um, Franklin and Trevor and uh, Michael. I thought that they were they were really great characters. A lot of fun. They're, they're kind of back and forth and they're kind of mutual hatred, but also mutual respect, but also friendship that they found along the way it was it was it was a good time throughout that that whole story so i am i am i am ready to go i am pumped this is this is gonna be good the leak showed that you may very well be playing as a woman for the first time in a grand theft auto game i could not wait to see the comments oh yeah the comment section is going to love that that's gonna be i would say uh don't read those because it's gonna be i i cannot tell you how many posts we're going to see grand theft auto is woke now those fuckers fucking democrat grand theft auto game uh that's that's going to be uh, probably all over the place so yeah that's going to uh to wrap up the show um like i said these are probably gonna be shorter with not a lot of news going on not you know new releases coming on or, or anything like that but um yeah just to reiterate uh, like i said at the top of the show so tomorrow the grand theft auto live stream to watch the trailer wednesday the next animated video is, is up i i re really hope that people give it a shot and, and check it out you know um as i think it's uh, i think it's a good one thursday we'll live stream the uh, the game awards and talk about all the uh the good stuff that is going on the announcements and wins and losses and all that stuff and then this coming weekend uh filming uh the game of the year or not necessarily it's not just game of the year but year end stuff with davis that will be out the following week on the 15th so we are filming it on the 10th and then it will be out on the uh on the 15th i will also of course that podcast will be up i'm not doing the show with davis I'm going to do it the night before so I have time to uh, to get cranking on getting this edited and, and uploaded. And then I have a bunch of editing I have to do for the year-end stuff. Um, that's going to that's gonna take some time. And then, uh, yeah, the last thing, I put it up in a, in a community post. So, you know, I only got two of the animated Perfect Reloads out this year. We did the fighting game one earlier this year, and now this one about the year 1999. I really, the goal initially with these was to get up six a year. I wanted to do them once every two months, and that just wasn't feasible. And I felt really bad that I just didn't get around to it this year. But this year was just, it was, it was a rough year this year. And, uh, you know, when I was, when I finally got into, I was kind of procrastinating procrastinating on this video that's coming out this week i had the script written or at least like 75 percent written i was just kind of like really taking my time on it and i finally got around to finishing it and getting like pushed into i kind of pushed myself to do it i got the script done and filmed it and started animating it and editing it and all that stuff and i was like man i really really enjoyed doing this i kind of don't want to stop but you know i'm about to be done with this video and i think it was it was uh friday thursday night thursday night I got an idea for another video and I just couldn't get it out of my head. So I went to my desk and started typing it up and wrote like a rough outline. And then on Friday, I uh, ended up writing the entire script and filming it. And I already have, uh, I've talked about this. The way I do the videos is they, I, I break them up into chapters or sections. I, I, animate each one section by section and at the end I compile them all together and I already have the first one done um it's not going to be on until January the reason why is because uh it deals with an anniversary and I just made the anniversary based on the year 2024 because we're about to be done with 2023 so it'll be out I'm it'll be out in January um I'm hoping to have it done within the next two weeks um but it is uh it is definitely the most ambitious uh, one that I have done. It's, it's going to, it's somebody that does not have an artistic bone in their body. And you can tell by the way I draw those things. Uh, it is, uh, it's, it's asking a lot of myself to try and, uh, to try and get things looking good for it. But so far I am, I am happy with it. And I think, uh, I think you guys will like it. It's, it's a different style. It's still animated. Um, and it, and it is about video games, but it is, uh, it is different than any of the ones I have, I have done before. So, uh, that will be out next month and, you know, stuff to look forward to. Uh, but that's going to do it for me. Christian, you have anything you want to say before we, uh, before we get out of here? Good. We're done. I have a lot to do to get ready for your party i have many wires in this house to cut small fires to set and dead fish to hide in the drywall fantastic why do i why do i live why do i live take it easy everybody see you again real soon <laughs>